nothing compares to the helping hand of a fellow artist. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 songs you didn't know were written by Prince. For this list, we're focusing on musical numbers that Prince wrote, but became bigger hits by other artists. While he did play background instruments on some of the following tracks, the primary vocals were delivered by fellow pop singers. Number 10, When You Were Mine, Cindy Lauper. Written and recorded by Prince for his 1980 release, Dirty Mind, this love song takes on an entirely new meaning when sung by a woman. So leave it to Cindy Lauper to cover When You Were Mine for her provocative 1983 debut, keeping the original set of lyrics and placing the song between two of her more popular hits. It's a unique type of love triangle ballad, especially for the pop culture landscape of the early 80s, and the song ultimately became Cyndi Lauper's seventh and final single off She's So Unusual. Number 9, Sugar Walls, Sheena Easton. Where I come from, there's a place called heaven. This time around, Prince opted to use a pen name, adopting the moniker Alexander Nevermind for this top 10 hit by Sheena Easton. As you might have guessed given the author, the walls don't represent those of a traditional home, but rather something more personal. And when Sheena Easton notes that blood races to your private spots and offers an invitation within the titular walls, well, the message becomes that much clearer. I can tell you all me. It's impossible to hide. The song becomes even more interesting when you imagine Prince with a pen in hand, perhaps anticipating a more PC world but unwilling to tame down his lyrical content. Number 8. How Come You Don't Call Me Anymore, Alicia Keys. Originally released as a B-side on Prince's 1999 single, this song was picked up by future superstar Alicia Keys for her acclaimed debut album, Songs in A Minor. Serving as the third single, How Come You Don't Call Me Anymore conveyed more of a retro feel for Alicia Keys, fitting as the original came out when she was less than a year old. Sometimes it feels like I'm gonna die. With a rich set of lyrics communicating feelings of isolation and confusion, the musical aesthetic has both a playful and bluesy tone, making the song ideal for live shows. Help me say how. Number 7, Yo Mister, Patti LaBelle. Yo Mister, really to Today, a song with a title like this might not exactly work for an R&B artist well into their 40s, and that's what makes this collaboration so unique. With a raw message for unassuming fathers, Yo Mr. chronicles the plight of young Kara, as Patti LaBelle so forcefully brings Prince's words to life. It's not your typical R&B song of the time, but even so, it still managed to do some damage on the charts. The street smart lyrics are hard to ignore, especially when paired with the vocals of Patti LaBelle. Number 6, with this tear, Céline Zion. I've looked everywhere I can just to find a clue, oh, to get to you. 
by writing with this tier specifically for Celine Dion, Prince demonstrated not only his lyrical proficiency, but his ability to match his content with the right artist. What do I It's a gentle, romantic production, and through the formal set of lyrics and accessible structure, with this tier evolved into a classic musical document of lost love, made even better through the intonations of young Celine. From conceptualization to final product, Prince and Miss Dion nailed it. Number 5. The Glamorous Life, Sheila E. Years after first meeting Prince at a concert, Sheila E. provided backup vocals for the 1984 album Purple Rain. Soon after, her debut album was in production, and the artist penned the ideal pop song to close out the record. With The Glamorous Life, Prince utilized a formulaic narrative of material excess, yet he added just the right amount of timely descriptions for Sheila E. to build upon. As a result, Prince and his protege formed a close bond as the song paved the way for Grammy nominations and another successful collab with 1985's A Love Bazaar. Number 4. I Feel For You, Shaka Khan. Alright, so one may not equate Prince with late 70s disco, but he did in fact release a disco like song on his 1979 sophomore album. Incidentally, R&B songstress Shaka Khan released an updated version five years later, complete with an opening verse by hip-hop icon Melly Mel. Lyrically, I Feel For You is relatively simple, but when combined with the superstar charisma of a prince or Shaka Khan, it takes on a more powerful effect. The purple one even took home a Grammy for best R&B song proving that music is sometimes about the overall experience rather than a transcendent set of lyrics. Number 3. Donald Trump, Black Version, The Time Written by Prince for the Times' unreleased Corporate World album and ultimately released on their 1999 effort Pandemonium, Donald Trump Black Version helped explore the idea of an Afro-American retelling of Wall Street. Oozing with all the sexuality you'd expect from Prince on tracks like Jerk Out, I'm about the, jerk out. No. the song also touches on notions of wealth and power and is far more softcore cinemax sensual than anything involving Donald Trump should be. It's hard to imagine how the Donald felt about this R&B shoutout, but either way, his reaction was bound to be yoge. Number 2. Manic Monday, The Bangles In what has to be one of the most bizarre scenarios of mid-80s pop culture, this track was originally composed for Purple Rain star's Apollonia 6, but it just wasn't meant to be. instead offered the song to the Bangles, which may or may not have been an attempt to woo the band's guitarist Susanna Hoffs. With writing attributed to Christopher, Prince's character from Under the Cherry Moon, the song proved to be a massive top 10 hit for the band in 10 countries, and was only prevented from hitting number 1 by Prince himself, who was topping the Hot 100 with Kiss.
before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. While I'm in the waiting room, a thousand thoughts I think of you. Number one, nothing compares to you, Sinead O'Connor. Since you've been gone, I can do whatever I want. Though the two artists in questions didn't meet until after this song's release and reportedly didn't get along too well when they did, that doesn't minimize the potency of this 1999 cover. Originally recorded by the Prince formed band The Family, it's been so lonely without you. It was picked up by Sinead O'Connor for her sophomore release. Nothing can stop these lonely tears from falling. While many even today may not have known who the song's author was, the abbreviated title, which Prince was known for, should have tipped listeners off. Girl, you better try to have fun no matter what you do. Kicking off the 1980s, this Prince composition has become one of the most easily identifiable and emotional songs ever recorded. So, do you agree with our selections? What's your favorite song that Prince wrote for another artist? For more musical top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.